Today I'm going to tell you a cafe tutorial. And this tutorial will have two parts. Part one is cafe concept. And part two is a pre-trained classification example. OK, let's start part one. What is cafe? Cafe's fourth name is convolutional architecture for fast feature embedding. And it's a deep learning framework which is easy to use. <coughs> when you want to train a neural network, uh, you have to have training data and its label. And the most important thing is you have to have a deep learning frame framework to operate the net. Okay. And the cafe is developed by the Berkeley Visions and Learning Center, BVLC, and by some internet contributors. Why is cafe is e easy to use? Uh, the first part is it supports Python, MATLAB, command line interfaces. For example, like we're using Jupyter Notebook in previous assignment, we just have to code some functions defined by cafe. Then we can do our like training or testing. The second point is Cafe is modular interface for dev development. If we want to change the deep learning network structure, like adding some layer or removing some layers, we can modify the .proto text file, then reload the Cafe, then it's done. The third point is Cafe is easy to switch CPU and GPU. If today my computer don't have GPU, then Cafe supports using, uh, using a function called Cafe point set um, mod, mod CPU. Then you can use CPU to process the net. The fourth point is Cafe's GPU mode combine CU, DNN, and CUDA. What is CUDA? CUDA is a GPU isolated library of primitives for deep neural network. CUDA is a parallel computing platform. It allowed Cafe to process the net on GPU. So I'm talking about GPU much more than CPU. So why? Okay. Here is a form to explain how much GPU fatter than CPU. Okay. And the these form results are based on time per mini batch in seconds. The lower value means the less time would take. And we can see this Alex, AlexNet. AlexNet is the net uh, we we gonna to use today. And here is the cafe cafe framework using the Intel i7 this processor with four cores. It cost once about one second per mini batch. And here is we using GPU NVIDIA GTX 1080. It only costs 0.038 seconds. So it's much faster. GPU is much faster than CPU about 26 times. Oh, you can think when you're training, 
you can speed up about 26 times. It's very fast. So this gives us a conclusion. We really, really want to do deep neural network. We have to buy an expensive GPU. Okay. Now I'm talking about if we want to using a cafe model or build it, there are three concepts we have to know. The first concept is blobs. Cafe stores and communications data using blobs. And here is the form it looks like. Like uh, four dimensions arrays. The first index is called numbered. Number is the batch size of the data. During we train the network, we may not use the entire sample training set to calculations in every iterations. Instead, we set a batch size numbered. This means we choose n samples from the whole sample's data to calculate in every each iterations. And like Alex Neck, we mentioned the last PPT. He said the training batch is n equal to 256. The second index is channels. Channels is the feature dimensions. It means, uh, for example, I have a RGB image and it has three, three channels. So we, we put cat equal to three. The third index and the fourth index are height and width. This is a featured height and width, or you can think it is a picture's height and width. Okay. So blobs stores two chunks of memories, data, and diff. What is diff? Uh, diff means the gradient. During we train the network, we have an objective functions, and our job is to optimize the objective functions. And the main view we to optimize that, for example, um, mini batch gradient descent or mini batch SGD both need to calculate gradient. The second concept to build a cafe model is layers. Layers is the deep learning based uh, layer is the deep learning structures. Oh sorry, a deep learning structure is based on layers. So you can see we can define convolution layers or pooling layers, activation layers, normalization layers, or the four connective layers. Okay. And the layer input and output gives us the directions of how the data will go forward. And the you can see the bot lab figure shows how we to define layers. You can see the name is convolution one and the layer type is convolution. Okay. And the button data means we, the, the data will, we, the input of the convolution one layers is from data. And top, it means after the process of these layers, these convolution one layers, the output we count out from convolution one. And this following is the convolution parameters we set. Okay, and number output is 96. The kernel size is 
eleventh, and the stride is four. Okay. Then you can see the bottom right figure this image net classifications with deep convolutional neural network is from a paper called ImageNet. This and uh, the writer is called Alex, so we simply call the, the net called it's AlexNet. And here are some many boxes you can see here, 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 here. Let's, you can imagine there are the shape of data look like. And the squares on the box here, you can see that. The box, the, the square box here, or here, and here. These are filters, means we use convolution layers with this, this input and have, have the output to get through to the next layers. Okay. So here are some layers class. There is five class in CAFE's models. The first one is data layers. Data layer is the bottom layers. It is where we import our data. Also, if we want to pre-processing the input, we operate in these, these layers. And the second class is vision layer. Vision layer is how we operate some vision tasks, like doing convolutions on image or doing pooling on features. The third layers, the third kind of layers is activation layers. Activation layers is where we decide which input be activate according to their value. And the fourth layers is loose layers, like softmax, cross entropy, and the five layers, common layers like inner product, accuracy, dropout, reshape. Okay, and here are some layers operations. There are three operations called setup, forward, and backward. And when we build a neural network, we have to initialize the layer and its connections once we use it. So we set up. And the second operation is forward. In neural network, you forward propagate to get the output and compare it with the real value to get the error. The third, the third operation is backward. To minimize the error, you propagate backward by finding the derivative of errors with respect to each weight and then subtracting this value from the weight value. I think that is difficult to feel it. So let's look at pictures. Here, this picture shows the directions of forward and backward. You can see here is the button layer and here is the top layer. Okay, so now you have a picture but without the labels means maybe you don't know the picture what look like. Okay, so you want the net to give you what 
this picture is. This is called forward interface. Then you have another pictures without label. And with label, you have another pictures with labeled. You want the net to learn what this picture is. So this is called backward learning. The third concept to build a cafe model is nets. The net is a set of layers connections in computation graph. It looks like a directly a cyclic graph, DAG to be exact. And if this is hard to imagine, if you have any study in data structure, you may heard the tree or the forest. If a graph is a cyclic and non-directional, that graph is so-called tree or the forest. So we define a set of layers and their connections, they are ordered in the plain text modeling language. Means we define all the nets in these files, prototext file. Okay. So the first part is so okay. And please everyone to open your virtual box. Have you all set up this add the VDI file? Name the name called Cafe Linux Ubuntu 64 bit. And next, I have named Cafe. Okay, Cafe 1. Next, the RAM, we recommend you to set four, about 4 gigabytes. And the next, you use the VDI file to import. We open the virtual box, we start. The image you want to this 16.0 fold this image. The first we open the this terminal. We see the cafe. Then we using Jupyter notebook. Then we go into the example folders. Examples. Okay. And here is a file called 00, zero dash classification. You open it. Okay, and we can see the first block. First, we need to include NumPy and Matplotlib library. And this command means we can let us to plow figure in Jupyter Notebook without popping a new Windows. And the plot parameters is set to how we plot the figure out. So let's run it. Okay. The next block is we have to import our cafe. In order to use cafe, we first use systems.path to insert the path to adding the cafe path into Python searching path. Then we import cafe. Let's run this block. It may take a few seconds. Okay. Now, the third block, this step we will detect is that cafe is installed or not. If not, we will download the cafe net. I think I give you the image is already downloaded, so you just run it. It will show CafeNet fun. 
we load and we, we, we download the cafe net, but what is cafe net look like? First, we can see the button and top. The button, the button layers and the top layers. The, t the button layers called input layers and the top layers called output layers. Expect to these two layers, other layers are called hidden layers. Now, it may look huge, these structures, but you can see here is some kind of module to, you can divide them in parts, parts, these parts. So I'm going to tell you what is the convolution layers. Convolution layers, after we trained, there are many learned features in, in it. So in the first stage, like convolution one layers, and the deep, when it goes deep, the feature will learn more complex, complex features. For example, some contour shape or um, edges in the basic, in the first convolution one layers. Okay. And the RELU layers, it is an activation layer. It provides nonlinear characteristic, like we can see this figure five. This is the RELU function look like. It is nonlinear. Usually, critical problems are nonlinear problems. So, using the like uh, nonlinear activation function like this is very important. And the pooling layers. Pooling means pooling layers. It is a form of nonlinear down sampling. There are several nonlinear functions to implement pooling. And the cafe net using the max pooling, like these figures, figure six. You can think the pooling layers have the mask. The mask is two by two. You can think it's a filter, but the weight is not the usually we, we look. And when the filters on this area, two by two, with max pooling, we choose the biggest value and save in here. And the stride is two, so there is no overlapping. So we, the filter will first is here, and it will go here. Stride is two. And also pick the biggest value to save here. This is max pooling look like. And the normed layers in cafe net, the known layers means local response normalizations. This layer implement the lateral inhibitions. And why we use these layers? Because this layer is useful when we are dealing with RELU. When we use the activation is RELU. Here is unbounded. The value will go bigger and bigger. So we have to use the, LR, the LRN layers to normalize the value it comes out from RELU. And here is the four connected layers here. It means every neuron in these four connected layers are be connected to less layers neurons. Each uh, the less layers each neurons will connect it to the four connected neurons here. So let's 
continue our example. Oh, the password is test. Now, this block we have to set cafe to use CPU mode, and we love the cafe models. Here is the cafe net locations, the structures. You can see the prototype txt files and the weight. Because the cafe net is be trained, so we load the pre-trained layer, uh, pre-trained way to use it. And here is the locations. Now we have to define the structures of the cafe net. Here is the structure, and here is the weight. Cafe test is means we are not using the dropout technical. What is dropout? Dropout, we, when we during the training, in order to prevent, prevent from overfitting, the deep neural network is afraid of overfitting. We force some neuron to stop working randomly. Or you can imagine that and you are a CEO, and someone in your office is absent from the office. But if you want to ensure the whole company keep operating, what will you do? I explain that. If I am the company CEO, I will tell other office officers to finish the absentee's job. Here is the same in the dropout. We force the other neurons to, um, to be trained or be take duty of others, others' job so to keep from the net be overfitting. So let's run this block. Here is the five blocks. In these steps, before the training, all the training set or image was be pre-processed. So today we want to test it. Our input must be pre-processed. So the cafe net pre-processed is all the RGB channels for each input or each samples. We have to subtract by the image net data set mean value. So here is we load the mean value, and this is printed. And because we have to pre-process, we have to create the transformers. Here's the transformers defined, and many data. Now let's run this block. You can see the mean structure value is here, BGR. The next block and uh, next blocks, we have to set blob for texting samples. You can see here is blobs. The data means the import, the input. And we set batch size is 50, the channel RGB, so it's three, and image size is 227 is default by ImageNet and AlexNet. So let's run it. The next block, we load in an image inside the cafe. Here is the path. Then due to I mentioned about we have to pre-process, here is we pre-process image called transformed image and plot it. Let's run, it, the, run the block. Here is the QT cat. The next block, we copy the image into the net blobs. And we set the net is forward to inference. Backward is training, so inference is forward. And to save in the output, the output probability will tell you 
what the pictures most look like. Okay. The argument max is we find the max value of from this. So let's run that. This class is here, 281. But what is it actually the class named? So the next block, we have to load the label defined by CafeNet here. So we run it. We will see the label is TabbyCat. So our image is TabbyCat. Then, as I mentioned before, the net not only just predict the max value, it predicts all class probability. So let's see the top five class it predicts. So let's run that. You will see the biggest value is tabby cat, and the second is tiger cat. Here is the top five classes. Don't run this part because I have not installed the CUDN and CUDA in this image because I'm not sure what your GPU look uh, like. If you want to try this, you have to uh, install CUDN and CUDA and run this block. So let's get to the 11 block. So this block will show you the parameter shapes. The parameters are exposed as another order dict dictionaries, net parameters. We need to index the result value with either the zero, the zero, or for weight is one. Uh, the weight is zero and the bias is for one. Now run this block. You can see the blobs data going through the whole internet is their shape. You can see here is the four dimensions, race, and go through this. Four connective is reduced the dimensions to two dimensions. Okay. And you can see the prop, it is an output layered. 1,000 means we predict 1,000 classes in this net. The next block, 12, we can look biases, biases dimensions, 96 and 256 here. This bias values, uh, bias, Numbered. Okay. So now we want to visualize the convolution layers in that. So we defined we define the functions to help us draw the um, the weight, the convolution weight. So we just run it. The next block will show you the convolution ones filtered weight in inlet. You can run this. Okay. You may think you may see here is very 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 many max in here. And this looks like Professor once mentioned in class the power features and black, black, white, black. But in here is learned from itself. So you can see here are many rotations. It rotates and it's more, more Black, white, black, white is more layers. And 
Here are the color versions. RGB, here, here, here. OK. And I have plot the convolution two layers out. Here it is look like. It's part of the convolution two filter. And the mask size is 5 by 5. So it's quite small. But you can, you can see it's more different from the convolution one filters features. It's more complex. OK. So the next block, we see it. We want to see after we processed, data processed in convolution one layers, what the output is. OK, so let's run this block. You will see here are many. You can see here are um, some blurred contours, like the cat edges here. Okay. And this function just show you the first 66 response. So if you want to show out, you delete this, and you can see all of them. OK, so we go through the next block. Here shows you the pooling layers, the uh, five pooling layers output is look like this. You can see here are many squares. Is the result. Okay. Then the next, we can see the first four connective layers after rectified. You can see the output value like this. It's quite complex. But let's see how the final probability we predict. So we see the prop. Prop is the output layer. In, and there are many uh, 1,000 1, output after this. You can see the peak, the peak value is on the 281 is the tabby class, tabby cat class. OK. So if you want to try your own image, you just have to copy the URL link to tap in here on webs. You will automatically download and classify how the pictures, the class. This is all my tutorial. And all my materials is from Cafe official website. And if you interested in deep learning, you can have some basic concept in this website. Slider share this website it will tell you more, more concepts. So thanks, everyone.